okay <clears throat> now peptic ulcers we are talking about clinical features what are the basic clinical features and the first is of course pain and talk about, uh, let's talk about pain the main is a pain epigastric re uh, re reasons of course as we know this one's oh, all right uh, okay this is sub umbilicus this is okay I divide the quadrant this is the epigastric reasons because the stomach lies here all right so the pain lies in the epigastric region pain in the epigastric regions main epigastric regions may radiate may radiate that what I want to tell about this epigastric pain this epigastric pain uh, epigastric pain and may radiate that is the specific um, very specific clinical symptoms of angina pectoris also that's why what I like to suggest to all doctors that uh, while if you suspect peptic ulcer please don't do not forget to do ECG very very important things because sometimes you cannot find out from endoscopy or from others uh, conditions a barium enema x-ray all right that's why just do one ECG so you may find out maybe angina pectoris or not or peptic ulcer because the epigastric pains may be due to angina pectoris and even MI that's why you need to remember these things and pain another is a pain is a how you uh, divide uh, how you uh, differentiate duodenal either or gastric if gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer according to the pain if soon after eating within 15 to 30 minutes then gastric ulcer if 15 to 30 minutes after eating after eating if after eating 15 to 30 minutes if there is a pain there is a gastric ulcer and if the duodenal means after two three hours after eating you need to all remember these things very very carefully so gastric ulcers how we differentiate gastric ulcer the pain immediately after eating 15 to 30 minutes but duodenal ulcer there is a two to three hours after eating only and another is a if the gastric ulcer the person may afraid to eat because that cause pain due to the release of acid in response to food but while is in a duodenal ulcers the uh, duodenal ulcers feel pain in a stomach empty stomach empty stomach if the st empty stomach there is a pain in a duodenal ulcers but gastric ulcer they feel uh, scared oh, oh i don't want to eat means because they are very scared uh, because after eating they may have a pains so this is very important and another things you need to remember is that which cause pain increase after two three hours this is duodenal ulcers and acid induced pain is believed to due to acid stimulation by chemical receptors okay these two things you need to remember one is after eating 15 to 30 minutes that is gastric and there is a very scared to eat that's why um, don't like to eat because after eating there is a pain and duodenal ulcers after two three hours after eating pain and empty stomach is a pain okay the another is a uh, relieving factors after food maybe after food there, there is a, a duodenal ulcer is a relief but another is a not relief more and vomiting is a vomiting 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 after vomiting gastric ulcer feel relief that person who suffer from gastric ulcer he feel relief that's why vomiting after vomiting if feel relief that is a gastric ulcers okay other symptoms is the same maybe uh, maybe there is a another is a um, uh, there is after smoking also pain or after a, after any uh, excess intake of coffee and tea and alcohol also there may be pain so this is the main uh, clinical features actually clinical features of peptic ulcers now let's go for the uh, and others others common factors is a nausea vomitings dyspepsia even heartburn chest discomfort anorexia hematomesis melena this all this all is uh, these all are the common uh, symptoms but what you need to remember is a pain very specific duodenal and a gastric these are the very important to clinical features okay 
now let's talk about the diagnosis okay how we will diagnose now let's talk about diagnosis how we diagnose uh, one is of course according to the clinical features now let's go according to the lab and instrument okay first very specific is a endoscopy very very good in endoscopy uh, from the endoscopy we can see what exactly the gas uh, this mucosal layers and another is a barium mill but we will use the double contrast technique double contrast technique third we can simply we will do the cbc urine test urine test stool test okay and even ecg i already to to exclude mi or uh, angina pectoris x-ray to exclude any others and another most important is s pylori test s pylori test for s pylori test is a urea breath test urea breath test then another is of course we can do the abdominal ultrasound abdominal ultrasound actually to exclude any abdominal pain maybe there are others uh, disease are present or not this is the main diagnosis diagnosis but must i will go for endoscopy of course barium meal and normal always we will do it here in the cbc stool and ecg to exclude x-ray to exclude and urea breath common blood count urea uh, urine test stool test ecg x-ray and urea breath test for special h pylori so and the from the endoscopy we will already will know either peptic ulcer or not so this is the diagnosis and differential diagnosis we can do with mi unstable angina aneurysm of aorta cholecystitis pancreatitis but the main thing is if we do this endoscopy barium uh, mill double contrast and h pylori test we will know what exactly so in the next video i will go management in a management i'm i want to describe in the details uh, that's why this is the last for this diagnosis thank you